So if you ever had to face a scary situation, maybe you had to go to a new school. Or maybe it was your turn to sing in the talent show in front of everyone. Or maybe you were facing a serious illness or someone in your family passed away. So what did you do when you were facing these scary situations? Did you run and hide in your closet? Did you panic and run off screaming and shouting? Well, in today's lesson, we're going to talk about a different way to face life's difficulties. Join us as we learn today how to face life's storms by putting our trust in Jesus so we won't have to be afraid. Last week we spoke about the four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we noticed that there are many situations in these Gospels involving Jesus and water. Last week we spoke about a time when Jesus was in the boat with his disciples. A bad storm came up and his disciples began to panic until finally they woke him. And Jesus spoke some powerful words to calm that storm. Amazing. Through that Bible account, we learn that no matter what's going on, Jesus is with us and he will help us. We can trust him. This week, we'll look at another situation involving Jesus and water. An amazing miracle that Jesus does in order to increase the faith of his disciples and help them to know who he really is. We can find this account in the book of Matthew in chapter 14, starting in verse 22. Jesus has just finished teaching a large crowd of people. There were over 5,000 of them. And he fed them all with just a few loaves and fishes by doing a miracle. But now Jesus sends his disciples off in a boat to the other side of the sea while he goes off to pray. You know, Jesus often spent time in prayer talking to God the Father. This is a very good example for us to follow. We should spend time every day talking to God in prayer. But while Jesus was praying, he could see his disciples and he noticed that they were having a very difficult time on the lake. Another storm had come up and they were struggling very much. Jesus saw them in their struggle and he cared about them just as Jesus sees us in our life struggles and he cares about us too. Rest assured, Jesus is tuned in and he is paying attention to everything and everyone. Now Jesus waited. He waited until the fourth watch of the night, until the disciples were pretty far from land and they had struggled a long time before he went to them. You see, this was a test of their faith. He wanted them to trust him and to learn who he really was. Let's see what happened. After the great feeding of the 5,000, Jesus told his disciples to get into a boat and cross the lake called the Sea of Galilee. I'll meet you later, Jesus told them. It was time for Jesus to spend some time in prayer. As his disciples took the boat across the lake, Jesus went to a place where he could pray. Even though it was late at night, Jesus knew that prayer and time with God his Father was important. While Jesus prayed, a violent storm arose. The wind was fierce on the lake, and the disciples, rowing with all their might, weren't getting anywhere. Even though they had been on the lake for hours, they were unable to steer the boat and became frightened. At that moment, Jesus decided to come to the disciples. Since he did not have a boat, he simply started walking on the water towards them. In the middle of that terrible storm, Jesus walked calmly as the crushing waves roared from all sides. As the lightning flashed and the rain pelted them, the disciples looked around in confusion, wondering what to do. And then they saw something on the water. Could it be someone walking on the water? It's a ghost, 
they screamed in terror. Every one of the disciples in the boat was terrified. Take heart, it's me, Jesus replied cheerfully. Don't be afraid. He walked confidently toward the trembling disciples who were huddling in the windswept, wave-beaten boat. Then Peter answered, If it's you, command me to come to you on the water. Peter knew that Jesus had control over all the elements, even the weather. Come, Jesus replied. So Peter began to climb out of the boat and stepped into the water. He was doing it. He was walking on the water. He could hardly believe what was happening. But then Peter shifted his attention away from Jesus and onto the storm. He felt the sting of the strong wind. He looked at the motion of the wild waves, and then he plunged down into the water. Lord, save me, Peter yelled. Quickly, Jesus grabbed Peter and pulled him back, helping him into the boat. Jesus looked at his disciples. Why do you have so little faith? Why do you doubt so easily? Jesus asked. Then Jesus stepped into the boat himself, and right away, the night became calm. The air went still, not even a hint of the terrible wind and storm they had experienced. The disciples in the boat were astonished. Their terror was gone, and they started worshiping Jesus. Truly, you are the Son of God, they whispered in adoration. So Jesus did something absolutely amazing. When he saw the disciples were in trouble, he went out to them on the scene, walking on the surface of the water. He didn't have a boat, and he didn't need a boat, because he is the Son of God, and he is God. He has all power and authority over nature and over everything. What an amazing miracle! Up until now, the disciples weren't really sure who Jesus was, but after seeing the amazing miracle, they knew for sure that he is the Son of God, and they worshipped him. Worship should always be our response too. We should show God how much we love and honor him. Now Peter got to experience this miracle too, but before he could experience the miracle of walking on the water, he had to step out in faith and obedience, acknowledging Jesus' authority over the elements. Peter knew that he didn't have any power of his own to enable him to walk on the water. He trusted in Jesus, and as long as he fixed his eyes on Jesus, he experienced the supernatural power to walk on the waves. However, the moment that he allowed the storm and his fears to get his attention, he lost sight of Jesus, leading to doubt, and he sank. In some ways, this happens to us, too. When we face tough situations in life, it's really easy to get focused on the problem, just the way Peter started to focus on the storm, rather than on Jesus. Focusing solely on the problem or the difficulties can lead to fear and hopelessness, and it gets our eyes off Jesus and we begin to sink. Indeed, in this life, there are many things to fear, but Jesus wants us to look to him and not be afraid. We need to remember his mighty power and his huge love for us, for those of us who belong to him. When we put our faith in Jesus and we keep our eyes on him, he will protect us and he will help us. You know, we can't choose when bad things happen, when life storms occur, but we can choose how we respond to them. So let's respond with faith and trust in Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. And when we do, we can have peace right in the middle of life's storms. Because peace is not the absence of life's storms, but the presence of Jesus in the midst of them. 
Let's pray together. God, I thank you for each and every person who is listening to this lesson today. I pray you bless them, and I pray they come to know you more through these lessons and through reading their Bible and hearing others who are preaching the truth about you. God, today we heard all about keeping our eyes focused on Jesus, your Son. Please help every one of us to truly keep our focus on Jesus, on who he is, on his love for us, on his promises, and on the hope we have of being with him in heaven one day. Help us not to be distracted by all the things going on around us, even if they're scary. Help us, God, with, with your power and might to be able to keep our focus on Jesus no matter what and to have the peace that only he can bring. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On the good days. And on the bad days. In the sunshine. And in the storms. Jesus is present with us. And he will help us. If we put our trust in him, we, we never, never have, have to be afraid. afraid. Thank you.